Hello, everyone. Today, I have a super amazing special guest on my podcast. Her name is Jana, and she lives in Florida. Now, Jana has the superpower that everybody needs, and that is to help nurses leave shift work behind and actually start a business. Now, we know in this crazy world that we live in, that is so needed. And I know personally of people that have left, specifically nurses that have left their jobs in this chaos, and people like Jana is so needed. Hi, Jana. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. You know what? When I saw what you were doing, I was like, wow, can we take you and clone you and make lots of you around the world because it's so necessary? <laughs> can you tell people a little bit about how, how did this all come about? Because this is such a big thing going from being a nurse, working in COVID, and then obviously you know, helping other people or other nurses to get out of the profession. So how, how can you just please enlighten us and tell us your story? Yeah. So my story to this point happened about three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in a float pool, which is basically you get sent to any unit where they're short um, and kind of get stuck in horrible situations. And at that point, I was very just drained, exhausted, overwhelmed. And it was kind of this point where I was like, well, I either need to change where I'm working or I need to change myself. And I wasn't really sure which I applied for other jobs and there was none available at the time. So I was like, I guess I need to change myself. So I did all kinds of things, got really fit, worked um, on my nutrition. Those things kind of made me feel a little more energized and, you know, a little bit better, but there was still something missing. And that was when I started getting more into the personal development and like mindset side of things. And the concept of life coaching kept coming up over and over again. And I was like, okay, I, I'm listening. I need to look into this. Um, so I actually reached out to a life coach that was by me at that time. I started working with her and like everything shifted. My job didn't change. My patient ratios didn't change, but everything changed for me personally. And that affected everything in my life. My relationships were better. I had more energy. I started to, you know, create more and people started coming to me being like, what happened to you? Like, how can I do this too? And that was kind of the point where I was like, oh, I can help people. So I went and got my coach training and started with burnout coaching. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, I need to go full in, in my coaching business. I cannot do nursing anymore. And so I slowly built up my coaching business and I realized that all my burnout clients were also nurses who were building businesses. And I'm like, I'm not burnout coaching, I'm business coaching. <laughs> And that was kind of the push for me. And that was like about six months ago where I transitioned into business coaching specifically for nurses. And I do have some other health care, uh, care providers in my um, clientele, but mostly helping them get out of the shift work schedule and create and serve at a higher purpose because most healthcare workers really went into the profession because they wanted to help. They really have that desire to help. And I think a lot of the times, especially amidst the chaos that is right now, they lose sight of that and being able to create something where they can serve at their highest capacity in their own unique way is really something beautiful. Yeah. I love that you do what you do, Yana. I think it is so powerful. And I mean, like just looking, I avoid the news, like it's the plague. But just looking, you know, like you can't avoid it completely because people share with things with you and it pops up everywhere. But just looking at the chaos in the world at the moment and so many nurses either just literally resign or getting fired because they don't want to get vaccinated or they don't want to do certain things. It's, it's incredibly sad to see, you know, people that is so incredibly important to the community and what they need to go through. Do you think or do you feel like there is some correlation with people wanting to leave now the nursing profession in before like maybe say two years ago do you feel like people are more traumatized when I would say nurses are more traumatized if I can use that word as into why they need to go yeah so I don't like I think that this was kind of the triggering point for a lot of people yeah. I don't think there was always that desire I think for a lot of people who kind of fell into nursing because I said they, like they like to help and they, they didn't really know what avenue that was going to be and they fell into nursing mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, 
uh, people, and I can say I was the same way, have this like fear of the unknown and they don't know if they can make it on their own. And they don't know, you know, like they're worried that if they try something, it'll be worse than where they are now. Then COVID came along and there's like, there's nothing worse than being a nurse during COVID. They're like, it, it, like, and you can use the word trauma because I mean, I have literally had to do some of my own inner healing after being a nurse um, during COVID in an ICU because it is traumatizing. It is very difficult to watch so many people get sick so fast and so many people die. Like, of course it's traumatizing. And when you weren't sure if bedside nursing was the right avenue for you to help, that was like, okay, I'm done. I need to find something else. So I think that is one of the reasons that there is such like a mass exodus of nurses because they realize that, you know, this is the worst case scenario. Maybe there is something better for me. Maybe there is a way that I can serve and make myself feel better and serve others. And we can all, you know, improve our lives. Yeah. Wow. We are living in some crazy times at the moment, right? And it's, it's, again, it's just so awesome that you help these nurses. So why do you think has been your, your biggest aha moment in the last year with your business? Yeah, um, I feel like it was my personal shift from like going full time in my business, where I realized that I had to completely like change my identity in that I was so focused on being an employee. I was so focused on being that nurse. I was so focused on given tasks and just doing them. Whereas entrepreneurship is completely different. It's completely like there are no rules. <laughs> you make them, you create, exactly. you know, you add value to the world and that brings yeah. money to you. And like, there is no time versus money. Like, I think that identity shift was the biggest like thing for me when I kind of had that moment and be like, oh, I'm like literally trying to build a business, but I'm like acting like an employee. This doesn't work. <laughs> so doing that work was transformational for me. And then seeing all my clients being like, oh, they need to do this too. So I feel like a lot of my personal coaching with my clients tends to be around this identity shift and shifting from that nurse employee to nurse entrepreneur. How did you, how did you trigger that identity shift? Because I mean, identity is, I I mean, if you don't find your true identity of who you are, you're going to struggle with a lot of things in like personal life, business, all of that. How did you come to trigger to, to figure out what was that identity that you needed to take on? Because I think people struggle to get to that point. Yeah. And it was kind of after doing some of the like digging or like the peeling the layers off the onion kind of situation. And a lot of the, I I love to use like letting go of the rule book of shoulds. We basically like you have been labeled your whole life. You've been told you should act a certain way. You should behave a certain way. You need to do a certain thing. You need to get certain grades. You have all of these shoulds that have been put on you. And a lot of the work I did and I have my clients do is like, releasing all these shoulds start noticing like where do you think that like you know a good wife has the food on the table at 5 p.m and all the laundry washed and folded like why do those things matter they don't they're they aren't but we put ourselves in these like teeny little boxes and say that we need to conform to this to be like a good human but really that's just holding us back from who we truly are and I feel like when we start peeling all of that layers back and being that employee was one of them for me. And I was like, whoa, that's clearly not serving me. Mm -hmm. Um, And once we start peeling all those back, you become the best version of yourself because you actually become you. Mm -hmm. Like you underneath all of that is the real you. That is, yep. Thank you, Yana. That is in love. You're welcome. (laughs) When when did you um, start like, Okay, so let me ask you this question. Do you do group coaching or do you do one-on-one coaching? So I do one-on-one coaching um, and then I have a a course that does have a group coaching component. Okay, so how can people get in touch with you then to get into your coaching programs? Yeah, so um, I do a lot of my stuff on Instagram. So I have 
my Instagram, which is Jana Holterman coaching. Um, and then I have a free Facebook community, um, that is from shift work to dream work. Um, so you can get in there there's there's tons of free value, um, and master classes and whatnot all in there to kind of get into my community. And then if you are ready to take the next step, then I offer a free, um, I call it a badass blueprint session, which is basically creating the blueprint for how you are going to become your best badass self to build your business. (laughs) I love that. That is amazing. And I think you guys must seriously just get, get in touch with you on, I follow her on Instagram and she's so fun to watch on Instagram. So she's got all these little videos and it's just, it's just fun. It's like my entertainment every day and it's not just entertainment. I actually learn something from her. So it's really cool to watch you. So Yana, you can see I've got a big hashtag goals behind me. Yes. And um, it's kind of like a joke um, within our, you know, within the, I should I say my group coaching and my coaching programs that I've done because people struggle to set goals. And I was always just like, have you done your goals this week type effect? So how do you set goals in your business? Yeah. So I am very much a like set it and forget it goal setter. So I do kind of like the, I would say like almost manifestation process where I like create a very vivid desire that I want, mm-hmm. you know, like I don't know, like I would like five clients this month, like on -on one-on-one program or something. And I really like envision myself achieving that goal. I envision them like being in my calendar. I really like vividly envision those. And then I just like, let it go. And I continue on my life, focusing on where I am right now, really having that like appreciation, gratitude, and fully believing that where I am right now is exactly where I'm meant to be. And I have everything I need in this moment. And this is like literally how I've created where I am now, because I used to be the planner who would like control the situation who like, it had to be the way I planned it. And I would hold on to it for dear life. And over and over again, my goals wouldn't happen because I was so focused on not having the thing that I wanted, that I was creating more of not having. So I have shifted that completely to creating that desire and then just like having gratitude and appreciation for where I am now. And over and over again, it's kind of like I achieve that goal and often better. That is really cool. I like that you say that you actually vividly imagine that because it is, it's, it's that whole visualization idea right do you have a yeah. I don't, if, I'm just a question do you have a, a vision board or do you have a, a goal board anything like that um I have like on the back of my like computer screen like I have like a few things that I like but it's very simple mm-hmm. and then I have like a cork board that's like behind me here that um has like quotes and things that are resonating with me like at this point like so I change those pretty regularly yeah I like that that's really cool 